And so this is Takeover, and what have you done? Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk Podcast, NXT Flavoured Edition. I'm El Fakador Laurie Blake, and I'm joined by Chopper Pete Quinnell. And the main event of this week's NXT, we'll be going through a bunch of the other stuff that happened on the show because there was the women's gauntlet match, there was uh, the in-ring re-debut of Dexter Loomis, which we'll be covering mm. as well. There was another thing that you wanted to go over, Pete. What was it? The Joaquin Wild kidnapping. Ah, yeah, the Joaquin Wild kidnapping <laughs> following a match with Kushida. And then also this, but the main event of the show was Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic versus Damian Priest, which was meant to be a TakeOver Tampa Bay match. Mm. Now, to signify that this was meant to be a TakeOver Tampa Bay match, in the empty arena, they put up a big TakeOver Tampa Bay logo which I feel like just signaled that, that, that this was not what they wanted it to be even more <laughs> than yeah. just not mentioning it. Um, it was, I think, a really good match. I'm just, yeah. I, I mean, like it just obviously didn't live up to the levels of expectation you would have for something like this, because this was obviously meant to be in a huge arena with a thirsty, thirsty crowd behind it uh, and probably meant to go about 20 minutes. Instead, it mm. went... I think it probably went 20 minutes with ad breaks. Yeah. Like in ring time. I don't I can't I don't know if they're resting in the ad breaks at the moment or I'm assuming they are because they got caught out that time on SmackDown. Mm. Um so I think it did go 20 minutes. Uh however it never quite reached the sort of fever pitch you would expect from these things and it's obviously like that's not their fault. There is a lot of issues with having no crowd in, in in an arena in wrestling because all the moments where people are down on the floor, they build you up and the audience interaction adds to the drama in a way that the, means the wrestlers don't have to keep putting their bodies on the line to escalate and escalate and escalate for nobody's response. Um, I think all three guys put on an amazing show on this match, though. I thought they did really, really well with what they had. What do you think, Pete? Yeah, I, I pretty much, uh, same as you, I thought it was a really, really good match. It just wasn't, you know, it wasn't like, oh my god, it's a Keith Lee, Dijak, Priest match from TakeOver. Like, you'd expect that from Tampa Bay, even though Tampa Bay was probably going to be a very stacked card. You would have probably expected that to be one of the matches of the night. And I thought this was a, a really good match. But like you said, I, I, I think with these kind of spots, because I, I think NXT are doing the right thing in having... Uh, no fans shows, but they're still ju they're just focusing on the in ring products. It's letting the wrestlers go out and wrestle instead of like doing you know like main roster matches. The main roster has discovered that the way to still have good matches is to let the really good wrestlers go out and do some really good wrestling. Mm -hmm. So they're doing the right thing, but I think just for a match like this, I think it's almost obviously not quite half, but like. A, quite a significant chunk of this kind of match is the crowd reacting to these spots. When mm. you see Keith Lee go for, you know, this, he takes a huge bump from off of Dijak's shoulders when Priest hits a spinning kick off the top rope. Part of that spot, it looks very impressive, but part of that spot is the crowd going, oh my God, what mm. did we just see? And from the build up spot? to it, the, oh, please yeah. don't die, please don't die, please don't die. Something crazy happens and everyone pops. Yeah, exactly. and I think it's... Yeah. I wonder if that's like a production thing they're going to start thinking about. Because obviously, like, all these shows are being run with a really reduced staff. Um, and, uh, like, you know, the smallest crew possible, as few performers in, in the location at one time. Um, but I wonder whether there's a there's a way of piping in some reaction from people who happen to be in the building. Like let's mm. let's hear people go, oh my god, on you know, like, and not just in the scripted WWE style commentary thing of going like, oh that's great, like Michael Cole just going, mm. can you believe it? Or oh anything. my, yeah, anything that he yeah. screams over and over again. But that is a scripted line. Like I want to hear some genuine reaction from somebody, and even if it is like a little bit flat, it might be better than what we're getting currently. I mean, um, it's, what it's what they're doing in AEW Dynamite. Like, they had on last night's show, from what I understand, they had, like, six people in the crowd, and mm -hmm. that's it. They were, like, really spaced out just around the ring. But even that makes a huge difference because you get some form of reaction. You get people being like, oh, that looked like it hurts. And yeah. even just one or two people doing it can make you think, oh, yeah, that did look better. So it's it, it's 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 like a... a Pavlovian response when someone goes, "Oh, you at home go, oh, along with them." Yeah, so it, it it it's really it's lacking that, and it's not their fault. There's nothing they can really do about that. 
But yeah, it did take away from this match that was supposedly a takeover match because it had the logo in the background on the Titan Tron saying this is a takeover match. And it, it didn't it didn't quite reach that that level. It was still very, very good, but it yeah, wasn't there was quite some... a, a Keith Lee Dijak Priest match. I mean, and there was some crazy stuff as well. And I think that's the, you know, there was that bit where uh, Dijak does the time to fly on Priest and Lee catches mm. him and then knocks uh, Dijak over with Priest's body and then just power bombs him onto him <laughs> about four times and then does oh, a spirit so bomb. Good. But like the, all of this thing would be like, you would build, you would feel that emotion in the crowd. And so I, I wonder in these scenarios whether... I think AEW's made a very smart choice by having the wrestlers who are present in the room because you can still, you know, adhere to social distancing by having them spaced out. But mm. you get to have the feeling that there's a crowd. But I think it also acknowledges that this isn't a regular show and it mm. acknowledges this is a really weird way of recording things. And um, I think breaking from the slightly pseudo-seriousness that wrestling always presents itself as this is probably a good time to do it. And I think NXT has continued to try to present itself as a very serious wrestling brand throughout this crisis. And I think this match proved that it doesn't necessarily work. It was still obviously an amazing match with amazing talent working it. Um, but like all the epic stuff they tried to do, like that tail of the tape they did at the beginning of the match mm. where they're announcing everyone and there's no reaction. It's like, I think we probably could have just gone straight into the match yeah without really yeah. with too without too much announcement stuff i think that might have actually just uh, from a, the perspective of watching it at home it might have just sort of in, like brought you in a bit more because it didn't feel epic it felt flat and i think that's mm. the, you know that's the problem with wrestling is so much about call and response you've got to like we've got to take out as many of the calls as possible and i know <laughs> wwe is wwe has absolutely been trying to kill the one fall chant forever mm, uh, by yeah. just going the following content is scheduled for one fall with a load of people in it like <laughs> just constantly <laughs> talking over the top of it but like we we have to in this scenario i think remove as much of the sort of the bits that point to the lack of fans if you're not going to play up the lack of fans, like it's a silly joke. Like like Kushida in his entrance did a really funny, like, I normally listen to the crowd here. Oh, there's mm -hmm. no one here. Like, I think playing that sort of side of things gives you that little bit of like, it, you know, we were, everyone is, there's so much bandwidth for people to change the kind of content they're doing. We've changed the kind of content we're doing. People have been very receptive yeah. and, and lovely about it. Obviously, it's trying time for everyone. No one's going to, like, I'm like, not here to dick on them for having to change what they were going to do. It's just, I think you just have to acknowledge that it's not the same. And that's yes. that's very important. Um, yeah. And I like, you know, I, I respect them for trying to make it feel epic. It just never quite got there. Um, mm. But yeah, I still think amazing match. I just, I hope that what they do coming out of this, because there were some really, really fun stuff that they, you know that there's, amazing things these three guys can do together and they did a fair bit of it but i want to see like this felt like those first few lee dijack like circling around each other moments again because obviously like mm -hmm. everything's kind of they're doing everything safely because you don't want to uh put more burdens on medical staff at this time at all yeah, so you want sure. to you want yeah. to do as much safe stuff as possible obviously these guys seemingly can throw each other with reckless abandon completely safely um but i can't yeah. wait to when things get back to normal to see the three of them just like go balls to the wall like what is the like what is that match going to look like when it's mm. just Keith Lee catching people out of the air who are also <laughs> giant as they do five flips and be like, ah, 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 wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm super pumped for that match when it does happen. It's unfortunate that this was branded as like a takeover match. And we're, we're still getting the uh, six-woman ladder match that's happening next mm -hmm. week, as well as the Champer and Gargano match from next week. It seems like basically everything else from that takeover is just being abandoned. Like, the they're still building for Velveteen Dream versus Adam Cole. They had a, a quick match against Bobby Fish to open the show between Dream and Fish, Dream won, and then made a promo about him. Um, but, like, that can't happen for months because mm -hmm. Adam Cole is in isolation. He's not doing shows. So that match is scrapped for months, it seems. We can't get Pete Dunne for months, who's one of the tag team champions. We can't get uh, uh, Bala versus Walter, whether that was at Tampa or that was at TakeOver Dublin. That's 
still not going to happen for ages. So it just seems like a lot of the build after next week, I don't know what NXT is going to look like because that would be all the TakeOver stuff done. And then we're just left with regular old NXT. And it's supposed to be the end of Gargano and Champa. Where do they go? Where does is Killer Cross mm-hmm. coming? Is he debuting? How does he fit in? I I I don't know where any of this is going at all. Mm-hmm. And I I don't know whether I'm scared or excited for after next week. Because I don't know where NXT is gonna go and I don't know how they're gonna do it. Normally they can pull something out when their backs are against the wall, but Fingers crossed. I, I, yeah. I wish them well. <laughs> I w- yeah, I would kind of suggest the like. I think the sort of what's going to happen in a bunch of the WrestleMania matches solution might be the most interesting, which is do a more filmic, controlled version mm. of each match. Um, because then you don't have to have the worry of we're kind of calling it on the fly. We're doing all this technical stuff. You can hide a lot of that with cuts and other things, and you can keep people safe. Um, obviously you up the editing time, but if you're not going to go out live because you shouldn't really get, you know, if you need 20 performers for a show, you shouldn't really get them all in the place at the same time. So like, I think maybe some, if wrestling becomes that for a little bit, maybe that's the best thing, or maybe, maybe they should just run compilation shows of NXT for the next, however long, which obviously is going to make this review podcast a load of nonsense. But uh, I, I, I think like a, you know, something that shows, some of the best takeover matches or like spotlights on certain performers from the company might be a more interesting way. So like this week it's a two hour spotlight on Johnny Gargano. Here's Johnny Gargano's best matches um, in full. Here are also some other clips of bits and like sort of his tail of the tape for his entire time in NXT. You could do the same with Shayna Baszler and Asuka and Bala and all these other people. Yeah. Um, I think that might be a much better way of getting through this time than doing the really pared down version of NXT. Mm, Totally. And I I think that's a really good idea, especially because uh, as of yesterday, I believe um, the governor of Florida has opened a, uh, has uh, signed off on a uh, stay at home order as of yesterday. That's going to last for 30 days. So the performance center and full sale are both in Florida. So it, mm. what, what are they going to do after like they I don't know how much they've pre-taped of NXT because I know they've done Wrestlemania and they pre-taped the Raw after Wrestlemania have they pre-taped NXT like I don't think that's probably mm. high on the priority list over Wrestlemania week so are they even going to be able to do NXT for a month they might have to d- resort to those video packages and mini documentaries and things like that uh, yeah i mean i really like your idea of just spotlighting one person per week because we don't know how long this is going to go on for and they have a pretty big roster of people yeah, yeah, so they, exactly, they, yeah. they've got many many weeks of things to do so they, they shouldn't run out anytime soon so yeah nxt's uh it's walking a razor's edge right now but uh hopefully they can they can pull someone out yeah because it's that's the thing is like it's still a good product it's just it's mm. all like it's one of those the the biggest criticism in I think a lot of wrestling is that like things are aimless and don't have a story and current climate gives you that that like leaves you with no ability to tell a long term story because you don't know what's happening in the long term. Um, so you know, like again, we're having these matches now because we were promised them, um, and mm. obviously the like, NXT feels like they has to pay off on those promises. But that's why we're not getting Adam Cole and Velveteen Dream because they never actually came out and said you're going to get Adam Cole and Velveteen Dream. They just suggested the match was never booked, Mm. but they have booked all these other ones. So they feel like, I think they want to wrap that up to be like, we're not going to just stall everything. Life continues. Um, And it's like, it's good, but it it just feels like a taster. It feels like an appetizer for what's Mm. to come when we all return back to normal. And like, I can't wait to, again, like I said, I can't wait to see Dijak Lee and Priest hopefully continue this feud into the future and get to do the full version of this match on a massive stage with a crowd who are baying for blood uh, and yeah. just completely enwrapped by the whole thing. Like, cause that's going to be amazing. And they've proved here that like, even in a, in a completely dead room, they can crush it. So mm. uh, yeah, props to those guys, but um, yeah, yeah sure. it's just a very, very weird time. So one other thing before we, mm. so we go through some of the other stuff on the show, uh, we had dream versus Roderick, uh, sorry for Bobby fish, not Roderick strong. We've already had dream versus Roderick mm. strong. Um, which was a perfectly okay match. It was uh, another another example of slowed down wrestling happening. Uh, 
We then got Malcolm Bivens uh, introducing us to his new Bivens Enterprises, which is like we said, they're now doing a Robert Stone brand too, basically. Um, yeah. I don't understand why. I don't understand. Nope. Like, it, it, completely unnecessary. Uh, I think Bivens is really good. He did a, he did a little bit too much. I'm trying to do serious face, and it came across as silly face. Like Almost at the end, comical, when, yeah. at the end when everyone was trying to be really intense, and he was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's quite he, I, did he also like he did he also introduce the name of the tag team i feel I could like hear he it like yeah no it's very strange and i even looked up a transcription of what he said and on the website it said la 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 inaudible on the bit where he supposedly said the tag team name yeah so I don't know what he said, but the like, faction think, yeah. itself is called Bivens Enterprises. Yeah, so like trying which... to get what those. So the, the the it's a uh, Rinku and Surav, isn't it? The, the uh, yes, guys. that's right. Yeah. yeah. So trying to get the name of the guys, and I was like, it sounded like Induce Share. Or something <laughs> yeah. Like, like like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I've also written Hindu Share, but like I don't like these are only this is me just trying to come up with words that might fit that sound. It's like yeah, I don't I don't know what he said, and I would love them to enlighten us with what actually happened there because yeah i think they only refer to them as rinku and saurav after that mm. so like i don't yeah. know we'll have to Bivens find enterprise. out who knows what Bivens enterprise is we then got yeah. uh the the re-debut of dexter loomis uh who mm. was in the breakout tournament on nxt a while ago he was a bit quite creepy did he win his first match i think he won his first match and then lost can't the remember yeah and then lost the second that sounds familiar uh, he's obviously allowed here because he already wears gloves as part of his gear, so that's of course, obviously yeah, that's so fine. He's fine. So, yeah, and he was against uh, the debuting Jake Atlas, who is mm. one of the more recent signees to the Performance Center. He is uh, an ex-Evolve guy, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and this was like, if if it wasn't a weird atmosphere already, Dexter Loomis certainly made it weirder. He's got really yeah. creepy entrance music. He just stares and doesn't blink. He looked really good here, though. He did a really mm -hmm. cool... My favourite bit was where he like set up for a 619 and then sort of did a slide out of the ring, handstand into a crouch, and then pops up with a little punch. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just a, it's a, a, a unsettling movements in mm. the ring, is how I described it. I love the way he moves and uh, portrays that kind of creepy character. I think he's got a fantastic look. Mm. I like kind of the both the two sleeves of tattoos, and he's quite wide as well with just the gloves and the trousers i think it's a really good look and just with the mustache as well the really creepy eyes like you mentioned it's a great great look and i think he can really do something good in nxt with time to come mm -hmm. and especially as well what i really liked about this match as well is jake atlas still looked good as well yeah he got in some really nice offense and there was a few kind of hopeful comeback spots but then he just kind of shut it down with uh basically like a side effect like a rock bottom sit down thing yeah, and then into locked like in a, a submission and then kind of made him tap yeah a um, sort of half rings of satin style yeah kind of like yeah. that yeah uh or which is like joke. so i mean getting a submission victory is a pretty big deal anyways making your opponents up makes him look really good but it doesn't make atlas look weak because he still looked pretty good in the match so thumbs up all round people look great a classic example of uh who's available today <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, Jake Atlas, we were going to debut you when we had a character for you and like music mm. and stuff, but hey, you just go, go, Jake. Just go. Hey, Austin Theory, go on Raw. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. So it. it's it's good though. I think like the the limiting of the amount of the people you're going to use for each thing is is a really smart idea in these times. So mm. that it does make sense to like if you're just going to feature people, just pick them. Obviously, I've said that, and then they have had a. Uh, <laughs> A huge gauntlet match, which uh, involved lots of people uh, mm. in very close proximity to each other, one after the other. Um, so the story of this women's gauntlet match was that Shotzi Blackheart was basically put on a very spirited performance as she ripped through uh, four people before getting mm -hmm. to Dakota, basically get, getting derailed by Dakota Kai. Um, Shotzi debuts a new finishing maneuver here. So she does that. She's done that. Used the big sent on before, but she mm -hmm. debuted a weird submission thing where she sort mm. of chicken wings the arms yeah and then uh flips herself over them as they're sort of sat down into like a, a bridge and then 
Mm -hmm. It's very, very awkward for them to tap out and very awkward for them to then get out of afterwards. Totally, yeah. yeah. And then she did she did the original version of that on Zaya Lee and just kind of kept the chicken winging of the arms. And then on Aaliyah, she chicken winged it, but then she grabbed the two arms and then stretched the arms out straight behind her and like made them touch. It was like, mm. oh, God, <laughs> uh, I quite like it. It's it's unique at the very least. It's very when she locks that in, you know that that is a Shotzi submission finisher that she is locking in. That's something that people will pop for when there's a crowd. That's something that people will pop for. They go, oh, it's that submission. It's very very recognizable. It looks like it would hurt if it was put in. So it might be a little bit contrived, but it looks like it hurts. So I'm all right with it. I like it. Yeah, it can't be more contrived than the chiropractor, can it, as a, as a finisher? So like, yeah, I think it it, it, it has that sort of shotsy look of like it needs to be something very different like mm. it needs to be sort of unorthodox and a bit weird and i think that fits yeah. her character quite well and i think totally. also this i think this spot fit her quite well like this mm -hmm. will stick you in at number one like you've you've gone up against some of the biggest names in nxt already in your very short tenure in this thing you've not really won a lot of matches but you do have a tank and you do have a lot of gusto behind you and this was kind of the proof of that like she quite handily beat Gianna Perazzo. She had trouble with Zaya Lee. She started to fade around Aaliyah, but managed to pull it out and then quickly dispatched of Caden Carter. But then Dakota Kai comes down and obviously Raquel Gonzalez helps make the difference in the Dakota Kai fight. But Shotzi, even, even as Raquel Gonzalez was attempting to make the difference, Shotzi yeah. still got out of that. That just bought Kai enough time to kick her in the face and hit the go to kick, which is the worst name move. Oh, like chiropractor. Genuinely, like the worst. When I heard the commentators be mm. like, oh, setting up for the go to kick, I was like, come again? Yeah. What? It's, I, I know we've named a YouTube channel Parts Fun Known, but uh, <laughs> like, we were going for a, like, it's so bad, it's good kind of thing. And maybe it's successful, maybe it's not. But go to kick is definitely shooting for that same goal and i don't think that's what it's either at least parts fun known is a pun of sorts it's got parts mm. unknown with fun thrown in it go to kick is literally like oh it's a go to sleep but you kick them so mm. go to kick and you do get to say you're hailing from parts fun known so it does make sense right yeah. yeah, it's just better on every level. Uh, something that I really liked about this match as well is it made me kind of realize for a second how well fleshed out the women's division is. Because even though really none of the people in the match, bar Dakota Kai, are really in that kind of upper echelon of mm -hmm. women's talent in NXT, it really made me realize, like, how cool is it that NXT has a women's division where you have upper and lower and mid carders rather than, like, women? <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. that's your division. It, it's really cool that you have people who are, you know, like oh well, well Raw's got two. Raw's got two tiers. What are you talking about? Raw's got everyone else and Becky Lynch and Becky Lynch. Yeah, exactly. So it's like if people got like Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley and mm -hmm. Io Shirai, Tegan Knox, Candice LeRae, Mia Yim. They're all the you know the upper echelon, the upper mid carders to main events of this women's division. And then you've got the kind of the people in this match. Uh, bar Dakota Kai, who I th see, think is kind of on that cusp between the two, mm -hmm. uh, but kind of everyone else, in the, everyone else in this match, this was a women's undercard gauntlet match, which I thought was great. It showcases all these people off, it helps build some more stars, and it's a really good women's division. I just really, mm -hmm. I really liked it. Yeah, I, 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 I enjoyed the match. I thought it was uh, like I thought. Um, also, like shout out to Sam Roberts on commentary as well, who did a really good job. I thought this like this week i i liked him i thought he was i liked him playing the heel i liked the heel see i i think there there was a line for me it was like i think he did good sometimes and mm -hmm. other times i was like okay shut up now you're just being annoying for the sake of being annoying i think something that I nigel like see nigel mcginnis i think does it really well where he'll side with the heels but he always has a point to it he always makes sense even when mm -hmm. he's defending the heels where like sam roberts would come up with a line being like oh yeah dakota kai's uh, oh no, who was it? Sorry, it was Aaliyah. She's the only person who deserves a second chance in this match. It's like, what? You're just you're just saying just, things to side with him. Just, yeah, just winding people up. I, I thought yeah. he had some he had some funny jokes though. I thought, uh, which was what was the uh, oh, it was the one about Kashida that I really enjoyed, where he said, um, uh, yeah, Kashida has a, Kashida came in with all this promise, and I don't think he's actually proved it as he takes on the koala challenge. Because <laughs> he jumped into like a choke. 
<laughs> there's some, there was some good. good there were some That's good little good calls in there. I don't like you know as a first first time thing. I thought that was really it was a good showing, and uh, added to the kind of unit because I think like what well, was it last week? It was Saxton and Phillips. Saxton and Phillips wasn't and it? That last really week, yeah. that was dry. Yeah, that wasn't great. Yeah, was, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, great. so I think I think he at least added an he added an edge to the commentary team that you know was desperately needed last week, mm. where you know someone was at least going to say something that might spark the other person to show an emotion. Mm. Uh, you know, and I think that that was important. Uh, yeah, so this this gauntlet match was a lot of fun. Um, I think Shotzi. When everything starts up again, I think Shotzi is going to get a big push. Mm, she was, showed herself to be very popular before um, everything went. Before everything went to, I was going to swear there, but I won't swear because otherwise people have to bleep it. So, um, yeah. So everything went down the pan, and uh, I think when when everything returns, I think she's going to be primed to sort of get a really big underdog rising up the card to a good position because i think every every time they have made her lose it's been against somebody really good or somebody Mm. who is cheating she's not really lost particularly clean um so i think that i think they are saving her for something special interestingly on the something special thing segue uh kushida versus joaquin wild was a utterly unremarkable match really in the grand scheme of things but this weird thing happened again. Because Raul Mendoza, a few weeks ago, if you remember, got abducted from the parking lot by uh, some luchadors in golden masks, stealing my gimmick. And mm. then Joaquin Wild after his match with Kushida, where Kushida calls a big old audible on the uh, <laughs> Are You OK bit, <laughs> <laughs> before trying to yank his arm off legitimately. That's um, hilarious. Joaquin Wild then ends up outside being interviewed, saying since he's come to NXT, he's not had very much success, blah, blah, blah. Uh, wagon rolls up, Lucha doors pop out, and they cart Joaquin Wild off to God knows where. Who knows, yeah. But again, um, I'm, I'm thinking King Cuerno. Totally, like, yeah. yeah. And I don't think it's coincidence that it's Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wild. Mm-hmm. To you know, lucha doors. You know, mm-hmm. I, I I don't think that's that's coincidence at all. And yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It's King Cuerno, and I'm actually really looking forward to it. I don't know where this is going to go, honestly, but I'm quite excited. If it's going to lead to some sort of like mob boss type character, mm-hmm. super into it, I'd really like that. I think it'd be great. Really looking forward to it. I think I also, it's, it's, it's a it's a cool way to build intrigue. I think. Yeah, and I think also because like you know like. Um... We've been banging on about this idea of like making things a bit more filmic to cover mm. the fact that like wrestling as a as a entertainment form struggles a little bit with no crowd. Like you know, something you could do to fix that is taking a more lucha underground style approach to making a wrestling show by having uh, more soap aspects to it. And I think that that first season of Lucha Underground is obviously fantastic and. Mm you could take a lot of cues from that in how to fill a TV show with limited crew and staff um, while also not having everyone go out there and kill themselves to make entertainment and obviously burden medical people. So like, I think, I think King Cuerno would be a very good idea to bring him in as sort of a mob boss style character in that regard, because then you could do, you know, You'll come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding. You could do. There's so many different bits that you could do with that, like of people but having to go see. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, you come yeah, to me I... on the day of the fiesta or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you come to me on Dia de los Muertos. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see where this character goes. I think it's, it's a really unique way to debut a character because we've mm-hmm. seen a lot of things. Even on this episode, we saw Dexter Lubis come back and have a match. And while the character's really cool on that, it's still him coming out and having a match. Mm-hmm. So this is something completely unique and different that we've not seen in NXT before. So I'm well into it, mate. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just yeah. hoping they like. I'm hoping it's not one of those things where they struggle to pull it off now because, mm. like, you know, th- it feels like something that they're trying to build a mystery in on the weeks that they can obviously get somewhere and film an NXT show properly. So I'm hoping that there is a payoff soon because it is, mm. it seems like it might be quite a fun idea and i think it's it makes good use of raul mendoza and Joaquin wild who weren't really doing anything have gone through a couple of character revisions to little fanfare really like you know they 
they've come out a few times with different music and different looks and it's none of it's really working out for them so i think like taking them away repackaging them bringing them back as the henchmen under the henchmen for some sort of boss luchador style character mm-hmm. might be quite interesting obviously we could be completely wrong but we're just going off golden masks abducting people so you'd assume it's some sort of luchador mob yeah. boss exactly character type thing yeah or it's exactly. dark order who knows yeah Quero enterprises mm-hmm. oh, can God, say? not more we don't need <laughs> we don't need more enterprises or brands <laughs> or incorporated like yeah you don't know um, oh goodness! Yeah, me. and then after that, it was just the uh, the Lee Dijak Priest main event. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought this was a pr- it was a solid episode of NXT. Given the circumstances, we can't be too harsh on them, uh, and I think they they did pretty well. And next week, I'm really looking forward to both the the big matches that they've got: Gargano Champa and the six women ladder match. I think the Black Heart versus Rebel Heart. One yeah. final beat. Yes, that you one. You can't stop um, the beat. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah, not because yeah. Killer Cross might be debuting, so he might well, stop, he yeah. might stop the beat. So stop your old um, ticker. TikTok. Mm, Anywho, that's probably yeah, all the time we've got, mate. Uh, it's all the time we've got. So thank you very much for watching. Please get the videos that have appeared on the screen now to watch more awesome wrestle talk things. I've been El Fake Dollar about that's been Chopper Pequenel, and that was NXT.